return of the, am I saying this right, manticore? Okay. I just want to make, now, what is, I'll ask them. I've never heard that word, manticore. It sounds like something you might step in. <laughs> like, oh, damn, manticore all over my foot. Please welcome Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. <laughs> I know it was in a, a song a long time ago, and it was also like a label name or something? Originally, yeah. Way back in the Atlantic days, we decided to have our own record label. 
because there were so many really fine young acts in, in Europe. And um, we, we put the label together with Atlantic, and we had various bands on this label. And it meant a lot to us at the very beginning. A lot of bands from Italy and, you know, places like that. It was fine. I mean, it was a time when, when certain styles of music really couldn't get onto to major labels. Yeah. And because we were, and we were unusual ourselves, you know, <laughs> playing sort of classical music and sort of progressive things that we uh, we kind of identified with it and we thought we'd just have this little label you know to try and bring some new bands through but the manticore originally was on an, uh, an album called Tarkus and it's a, it's a mythological animal made up of a scorpion's tail and a lion's body and a man's head yeah if you can believe that <laughs> something, something we all aspire to be right yeah okay we'll move on let's talk about you guys how have you changed since those early days we're older. We're older, yeah. <laughs> That's probably about it. But the music ha has evolved, but I don't know if I can put it into words. Well, I mean, there's much more sort of technology these days. There's many more things to use to create the music. I mean, obviously, the individual players, the writers are still the main thing, but there are many more tools to use to enhance it now. That's the difference between now and the 70s when we started. Yeah. Well, what do you think about music now? compared to the 70s. What do you think about the direction that music is going in? Well, I'm not too impressed with it, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I've got two sons which um, introduced me to a lot of the, the new music. Mm -hmm. and um, like, like what kind of stuff does he turn you on to? Uh, things like, um, gosh, uh, Pearl Jam, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Oh, know. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. And, and what do you think of this stuff? I, I mean, generally speaking. What I think of the, the yeah, modern generally music? speaking of today's stuff. I think it's great. I think rap music has got uh, has got its point. It's you know it's it's um, it's street music and rather like uh, how the classical composers used to use folk music to be inspired by. I think that rap music has got a little way to go yet. You know I don't quite understand some of the lyrics which are going on, but yeah, the, yeah. the rhythms are good. Yeah. How yeah, about the musicianship out there right now? I think the musicianship's good. It, it's just that the the whole of music has become more market led than music led. I think you know. Mm. People have become very market conscious about it, and uh, I hear sort of uh, there's a sort of undercurrent of frustration that I hear when musicians, uh, to a large extent, have to conform to be able to get on the radio or to be able to do this. I mean, we're in the fortunate position where we started a long time ago and have built up a fan base. So for us, it's different. But I, I, I would hate to have to start now. It would be terribly difficult. That's not what you told me this morning. <laughs> I told you not to tell him. I mean, really. What do you all listen to when you're chilling? Oh, different things, personally. I mean, I do like Pearl Jam, as it happens. I think they're one of the few bands that have come through with an identifiable sound, you know. Um, obviously, that Seattle thing has taken over in, a, in quite a big way. Um, I listen to everything, really, from classical to jazz to, to funk, you know, you name it. If it's good, I'll listen to it. That's how I view music in general. Yeah. What do you think? What do I listen to? I listen to jazz, uh, classical. I love the, the, the early jazz of the sort of like late 50s, early 60s, like people like Monk. What was your first big gig, you remember? Mm. The first big gig was the Isle of Wight Festival. Um, I remember it because uh, we did the actual first show was in a tiny little town in the south of England. Mm -hmm. and we were very nervous and we, did, we didn't really know what was going to happen. And it was great, but it was in this tiny little place. The very next day, it was, I don't know, 600,000 people. And we'd been booked to play on this festival and literally uh, we became sort of internationally known pretty much pretty much it was a sort of star overnight thing you know who One else was at the festival oh, oh Jimi, Jimi Hendrix, Hendrix the Doors, the Doors yeah. uh, Janis Joplin mm. you name it Jefferson Aeroplane yeah it was one of those all-time great festivals the kind of thing you don't see too much of today which is a shame you know I don't know why they don't do those it's things more anymore. event value then great. today they don't have this shop event value you know there's not those big festivals it'd be nice to see that happen in the coming summer yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Thank you all for coming by. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. We're Paul next.